I think it's just like Johnny Cochran said. If the RV nerd fits, it's too legit to quit. Was that MC Hammer? Man, Coachman tried to sneak one out there on us, but I caught it, and I think you're gonna like it. This baby right here comes in just over 3,500 pounds. It's the new Apex 186 bunkhouse. It is a brand new floor plan. It's it's not a replacement for their existing 185 bunkhouse, in case you're curious, if you know their lineup. It's a, um, it's a sister to that one. It is about a foot and a half longer, so immediately there's going to be a big difference there, and as a result, it does weigh a little bit more. I think you're probably going to want about a 5,000 pound tow rating or above here what this one's giving us our good door side window coverage at the 185 lacks it also gives us those bigger double over double bunks and a little campsite kitchenette on the outside of the camper so that you can take some of the fun and some of the cooking heat outdoors and not need to come in and out of a small camper with your family quite nearly as often um, these are uh, kind of sneaky also in that they're 90 inches wide apex actually was doing that way before it was cool that's seven and a half foot if you're doing the math in your head right there and it gives them just enough space to do those bigger bunks and put a full bathroom beside it with a uh, a sink in the bathroom so you don't necessarily have to wash your bathroom hands in your kitchen sink um there's some i call this light duty off grid or like off pavement type camping right here where it does have a bigger tire package these have really good holding tank capacities actually for no bigger than the camper is and it the light colors and the body size that giant windshield these look and feel nice and big inside so you, you never feel like you're really cramped up in here it has a minimal solar package and it does force us into a gas electric two-way fridge only there's no 12 volt fridge option on these which is one of the things that i kind of ding them for in this but this little floor plan it doesn't have a slide, but the way they do kind of a, a corner Murphy bed on this, it gives you the space of a slide when you're stuck inside on a rainy day. Let me know what you think of this new one right here. Let's get going. So as we go through this RV, there are going to be some things that are just awesome. And there are going to be some things that are not just awesome. And I'm going to talk about both of those things several times because I've yet to find one RV that works for everybody. And I could see this RV working for plenty of people, but maybe not everybody. I want to make sure that you're, you know, you're getting your second camera the first time. You're going to spend a lot of money, right? Let's make sure you're doing it right. Like, how about the fact we got this giant breeze-through oversized window over here under the awning side of the RV. That is cool. That's one of the things this floor plan does very, very well, I think, is it gives us just fantastic campsite visibility. You've got a breeze window over there. The front windshield does not open for airflow, but the side window over there and the matching XL kitchen window straight across from the dining window, those all do open for airflow. So you've got awesome light, awesome visibility and great airflow, plus directly above our heads here, uh, basically right outside the bathroom door, you see that this does have one of those big XL vent fans. Now there's a smaller four inch fart fan in the bathroom. So you might ask, why do they put the big one here and the small one in there? And I think the answer to that is because this is the biggest room and I'm trying to go slow not to make you sick. I know when I'm straight up and down, that gets a little tricky sometimes for folks. Um, but the uh, if you're going to go that light duty off grid off pavement camping, I think you're going to like being able to open these windows and crank that one fan on and getting a nice breeze rolling through here. Whereas in the bathroom, it's a smaller room. The smaller fan is minimally sufficient, but still sufficient for its purposes. Now, as we saw in our little floor plan in a flash, this is a Murphy bed style camper, but this is what I call a bendy bed. Here's just kind of a quick demo of me blazing through it real fast. Now, you might notice when I did that, I did peel the, um, the bed spread off before I did that because one of the downsides of a bendy bed Murphy bed is that you pretty much do have to make your bedding every morning and every night. Uh, one of the benefits of it, though, is that you will maintain a full outside pass-through compartment. And since the bed doesn't fold all the way up to the ceiling, you're maintaining that full overhead cabinet space right there as well. Um, now, if you don't care about this being a Murphy bed, one of the cool things is because there's no slides to block your way, you could just leave that sofa down and you could use it in bed mode full time. You don't have to use it as a sofa. But if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, sometimes it is a little bit nice to be able to gain that extra space. Um, and, you know, looking at this, something else I kind of considered right here. 
Plus, when you're up here, you got a perfect little place for Eartha Kit to take a little cat nap. So who is the best cat woman in history? I mean, that's truly the question I think everyone tuned in here to ask and answer today. Is it Eartha Kit, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, Halle Berry, or is it uh, more recently Anne Hathaway? Uh, I, I guess we'll let the internet be the judge. Now you see how there's that little bit of wiring hanging down there in that deep overhead cabinet. That's to power the light right there. And like I said, this style of bed does allow for more storage. And with this RV being seven and a half foot wide, it means that we actually have at least one full-sized hanging closet over there, although you could easily just add some shelving into it if you wanted. Now here's the thing with this whole bed system. It is a camp queen. And unless you decide you want to take out that closet, there's no way to extend it. That being said, you may have noticed when I laid on it, I had just enough room to keep my feet on the mattress with my head all the way up against the wall. Now, keep in mind, when you have a pillow, your feet are going to be slid down a little bit further. Maybe that doesn't work for you. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to give you the best reasonable demonstration I can. And this is kind of cool. This is what I call a why not pocket. They had a little space right there. Why not open it up, you know? Plus, down below the sofa, you've got yourself, like, basically a little shoe garage. And normally, I'm not a big fan of netting. I think that was actually a really smart decision here because it's going to keep all the little stuff that you have down here in place well enough, but still leave it accessible. I think that was smart, and it's lightweight. Now, again, giving you the good news, bad news of this thing. Telling you where she shines and maybe where she doesn't. Um, it is nice that this RV is carpetless. It is ventless. Actually, uh, it, it's not a ducted furnace system because it's such a small camper. They really didn't have a lot of need for something like that. Uh, so it's about as easy cleaning as they come. You see how you've got the, uh, the storage above and below the dinette right there, which can obviously fold down into a little sleeper. Although this one, having the double big bunks, I don't know that you necessarily need a dinette here. Um, and I'd be, you know, what would you think of a sofa in a position, in, actually, I, Ember, I forgot, Ember in their 190 MDB, they basically do the same floor plan as this, but they put a sofa over here overlooking this window. What do you think about a sofa versus dinette? Or what would you think about the idea of like a little bar or a shelf right there and some stools or chairs creating like a little breakfast bar that overlooks straight out your uh, big campsite window over here? I think that would be kind of cool, although it would probably be sort of hard to fit four people at it. Where One of the benefits of this being that uh, seven and a half foot body is you can actually fit four people around this thing. Now, if you look down under the dinette between the post legs right there, you might notice a set of household outlets uh, built into the dinette. Handy little place to charge a phone, run a laptop, you know, a coffee maker, anything like that. Outside, or no, not outside, stupid, stereo speakers under those overhead cabinets as well. Outside speakers on the inside of the camper. I am just batting a thousand today, guys. Anyway, um, sealed edge, press membrane counters through the entirety of the RV. That is, again, something Coachman's been doing longer than just about anybody, kind of like Asdell. They've just been doing it uh, a little bit longer, you know. Now, giving you a quick look here at the uh, kitchen, and it's all kind of clean, closed up position. Um, I, I love that big campsite window or, or, or kitchen side window right there again. But opening everything up, one of the things that you can't see just by glancing at this thing is that it uh, it is pocket screwed cabinetry. It is screws into a wood core cabinet. It does have a sticker wrap on the front. And I got a feeling some people are either going to love or hate this kitchen with not a lot in between. I'll tell you something I personally like about it, but I know not everybody does. I like the position of the microwave. I like it down here where you're less inclined to spill hot stuff. Now, that being said, my grandmother at her age, I don't think she'd enjoy bending over to get stuff out of that microwave. So, you know, I can understand that. I like the look of the kitchen. I greatly dislike the complete lack of any and all drawers. I know a silverware organizer could probably overcome that, but it just, I don't know, that feels like a little thing that could have been done better to me. Um, I do like these uh, the outlets right here. What's kind of nice about this, they're so close to your little Murphy area or your bed, as it were, you could use those either for kitchen or for bedside use, like phone charging, so there's some benefit there. And this floor plane does a lot of things well, but this is not a camper that's really designed of like, hey, let's sit in it and watch a lot of TV because your TV hookups are kind of up here on the wall. It is most definitely an afterthought. But I don't think that's what Apex is going for. Apex is still 
It's a nice one, but it's still a little bit more of a camper in a lot of ways than just a glamper. Now, they do some great fit and finish work. I love all the radius work, how nice and clean it is. But it's definitely something where it's a little more intended to be connected uh, with other people that you're camping with and with nature. It doesn't feel like it's something that's intended for like sitting in it and, and, and just spending all day watching, I don't know, wh whatever you're watching. What are you guys watching on Netflix or whatever right now? I need a new show. Now this doesn't have a rear wall access door, which I kind of wish it did, but I think I know why they didn't. You see that little box back there? I think that's where some kind of either wiring or plumbing is run, so they couldn't necessarily open that up for cargo. It is nice though, at least, you know, it, it's a little less convenient, but you could still kind of bring little kids bikes or folding e-bikes back there. By the way, a, uh, a big like um, tub is a great way to transport an e-bike inside an RV if it's a folding variety. Uh, because you can kind of fold it up, set it in that tub, and that'll kind of keep it from banging around and clanging around into things. Now, notice each bunk has its own privacy shade, which is great. Um, both bunks have a window that does open for airflow. Key detail there that they nailed on this one, doing a really, really good job. Uh, bunk ratings are 300 pounds, by the way. I want to make sure I saw that little sticker, because it can vary sometimes from unit to unit. And both uh, bunks have their own set of household outlets. The bunks do not have any of their own little United States bees, them USB plugs that everybody likes so much. Um, a lot of people have started asking too, why are RV manufacturers using USB type C plugs? And to that I say, I don't know. Probably because this is a industry that is very slow to adapt a lot of new things. It tends to be very uh, traditional and regressive where possible instead of progressive where possible. And um, as a result, that's kind of my estimation there. Although, as technology continues to adapt and USB Type-C continues to become the more dominant type, you will see that uh, probably change over time. Now, you might have noticed the light room around the toilet was, eh, it was okay. The headroom in the shower, though, man, um, if you're over six foot like me, you are all up in that skylight. Thankfully, it does have that skylight, though, and the full shower surround paneling is nice. Now, they seem to also be one of the few that's still using a tub as opposed to a shower. Coachman tends to do that in a bunkhouse model where they tend to do a shower in more of a solo or couples unit, if that makes sense. Now, I briefly touched on the cabinet construction, but what about the whole body, the whole shell? Um, this is a uh, almost one of the few rare examples anymore of a true classic uh, all-aluminum skeleton uh, ultralight. Laminated floor, laminated walls, laminated roof which you can just pat now obviously i'm not super mario brick jumping bashing this thing up here you know like it's super smash brothers on nintendo or something like that i'm just tapping on this thing to let you know it's solid um one of the other things here is it is six and a half foot tall on the sidewalls but it does have a vaulted ceiling so at my height at about six two today i'm not wearing boots or a hat or anything I can walk under the knobs of this air conditioner without ripping the skin off my nugget up here just an extra little well, nugget of information. <laughs> I thought that's so stupid. Now, I kind of mentioned it when the video first started, but let's talk towing. The maximum weight of the, the trailer plus maximum cargo on this is about 4,700 pounds. So my thought here is if you get like a 5,000 pound tow rating or above, you're gonna be all right. And the more above that 5,000 pound mark you are, the happier you're going to be. Um, Apexes, there's something about these nanos. They're seven and a half foot wide, but they don't look, they don't feel seven and a half foot wide. They look a little bit bigger. And I think it's maybe because they put just that big honking chunk of uh, automotive bonded windshield glass in the front of this thing. It, it just kind of draws the eyes out a little bit. Kind of like when I start wearing horizontal stripes. Ooh boy, I look a little bit wider than maybe I actually am. That being said, I'm not the biggest wide load out there, but I, I, I understand I got a spare tire around my midsection for sure um, <laughs> um there's uh they call this the apex off grid again and again i call this light duty off grid or maybe off pavement camping as a couple of our viewers uh were kind enough to uh to, to mention i think mr samuel martin uh the third there was the uh one of the first but one of the first things you'll notice is double propane tanks with an auto changeover regulator that is not unheard of on a single axle camper but it is less common and uh you know it gives you more of that time away from everything again the holding tank capacities on something like this i think are pretty respectable given the overall size of the rv um inside here 
You see, it, it does maintain with that kind of flip-up, bendy bed style, Murphy sofa bed thing. You do still maintain some full pass-through storage, which again, is obviously better than none. Now, real quick note, I think I mentioned inside, this is an all aluminum skeleton. And then we get here under the bed and you obviously don't see aluminum. Uh, there's a difference between an aluminum RV structure and then like furniture structure like the bed. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, I looked under the bed and I saw wood. That means this is wood built, right? No, it's actually not. Just help clarify that a little bit. Um, down below here, if you are sitting outside, one of the nice things about those plugs right there is they are feeding power straight off the battery. So you have an easy little place to keep an outdoor Bluetooth speaker or phone charged up or whatever. Uh, the little lights there are for up front. Then up top there, we see that uh, solar charger. At the time of this filming, that is a more basic solar package. Uh, like you may have noticed in our early flyby footage, there is a solar panel up top on this. That's something that like uh, all Apexes and actually all um, Spirits by Coachman, they all have that same um, uh, charger and 100 amp, uh, or 100 watt rather, very different, 100 watt solar panel up top. They don't offer currently any sort of expanded solar capacity. That's another one of the reasons I sort of call this light duty off grid. I, I, I try to, I, I want to provide some reasonable, realistic expectations here. Now, one of the things I'm kind of noticing, it's not the world's biggest awning. It's not the world's biggest camper, but they did put the biggest awning on it they possibly could. And it does encompass uh, the, the outside camp kitchen, which I think is going to be cool on a rainy day. And other than that, it comes right up front here to this baggage door. You might notice, yes, it has the traditional twisty locks on it, but it is magnet held back. Um, also, one of the things that you can't really discern just from camera on these is how it does have a key-like system. So you only need one key. You don't have to walk around with this like, you know, uh, giant jiggulation of keys like I have. Technical term, by the way, jiggulation. So your entry door, your baggage door, all that stuff is just one simple key. Um, Coachman has been using Asdell longer than pretty much anybody. And if you're not familiar with Asdell, it's a composite resin material. It takes place of wood panels in the, in the walls of this RV. That is both the sidewall and the rear wall, by the way. They didn't used to use Asdell in the rear walls at all. And they used to use Asdell only under the fiberglass of the sidewalls. Now they're using Asdell on the inside and outside layers of those walls. In addition to being lighter weight, it also is a little more noise dampening. So that's one of those things that will help you, you know, if you are, uh, if you're a light sleeper, you know, that, that certainly won't hurt. Now, um, the outside camp kitchen on this uh, is a standard feature. A lot of people ask, can I get it ordered without that? And no, you can't. But all you have to do is remove the fridge. That uh, cooktop is just basically a drawer. You could just slide that out. And then you basically have some built-in pockets or you could remove all that stuff because none of the stuff that you see in these camp kitchens is like load-bearing. I do like those outlets out there, but keep in mind, uh, again, being fair, this RV does not have an inverter by default. That's something we could probably aftermarket for you. But from the factory level, it does not have any sort of inverter function. So household outlets, when you are off-grid, will not be functional. You will need to still have either a generator or a park power hookup for something like that. Uh, gas grill quick connect, of course, down below the camp kitchen. Four corner stabilizer jacks. Pretty much goes without saying this class, but I thought I'd mention it anyway while I was staring at them. Reverse lighting is something that's a little bit newer to these. So that when you are backing into a site early morning, late night, depending on when you get in, I don't care how early my wife and I depart for our trips. Somehow, we always end up getting there like three hours later than we originally predict. Um, I don't know if anyone else uh, races the GPS to try to get to their destination. I don't do that stuff when I'm towing a trailer, of course, but um, if I did, I would definitely lose. The GPS would beat me there every single time when I'm towing. I don't know why. This is something I think they're doing pretty well. Um, the uh, that That's not like a specific super big, super tall off-road tire or anything like that. It is a 15 inch, by the way, 15 inch wheel, but um, you notice how you've got good clearance for your uh, your sewer pipes down here. Now, I don't have the RV full on dead level. I've got it about eyeball level, but overall, I think it's doing the job pretty well. And you see out here how we do have a black tank flush and an outside utility shower. A one-two punch right there next to that single sewer outlet is a nice little find. 
And if you appreciate the way that we show you the good, bad, ugly, and everything in between, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video. And let me know what you think about this guy. Um, like I said, it's a similar floor plan to what Salem and Wildwood are doing. It's a similar floor plan to like what Ember is doing. And it kind of like if those two campers had a baby, it comes in uh, a little bit simpler and a little uh, more affordable like a Salem Wildwood, but it has some of those nice, um, you know, the bigger holding tanks, that uh, the capacity for tank heaters, a little bit of solar, kind of like an Ember. It's sort of like in between the two you know it doesn't exactly go either way i'd really be curious to know what you guys think about this one like i said i think coachman really tried to sneak this one out there they didn't really announce it too awful much but i'm glad it's here i think it exists nicely beside the 185 but do you think that this replaces the 185 or do you think that they each have a little bit of their own um kind of identity i'd, I'd, I'd love to know what you guys think about that one and until next time i'm gonna go get some sunscreen take care stay safe have fun Happy camping, everyone.